beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto and this week we're gonna talk a little bit about how to survive the winter as a motorcyclist. <laughs> These things are probably a little bit less relevant for people who live in some southern states or countries where your riding season is year-round. Unless you're a little bit crazy like my friend Bill who built their own sidecar so that they could ride year-round. Mad props, Bill. <laughs> My first tip for you for surviving the winter as a motorcyclist is to do all the maintenance you've been putting off on your bike. It will give you some much needed time with your travel companion and also make sure that your bike is 100% ready for any surprise spring trips that you end up taking because you just can't stand it anymore. <laughs> if you don't like getting your hands dirty or you would just rather take your bike to a professional, that is totally okay. Know that dealerships and motorcycle shops are bound to have better specials on maintenance in the winter time when they're hurting for money. Also, you don't have to wait three weeks to get your bike back because they're not gonna be slammed with people in the winter time like they are in the spring. Speaking of maintenance, clean your gear. That shiny, expensive Gore-Tex doesn't work so well when it's filthy. And those bugs get much harder to get off once they've had a lot of time to cake on to your gear. Also, if you're a motorcycle camper, make sure that you're taking care of all of your camping equipment as much as you possibly can. That stuff can get really expensive and it's important for us to know the proper storage solution so that that gear can last longer. For example, you don't want to leave your sleeping bag in its compression sack all winter. The longer that down spends all crunched up like this, the less likely it is to loft properly in the springtime. You can lose up to 10 degrees of warmth if your sleeping bag is crunched up the whole time that it's in storage. Most higher end sleeping bags will come with some kind of storage sack that's like twice or three times the size of its compression bag. Or if you don't have one of those, you can leave your sleeping bag in a trash bag, a nice big trash bag, so that it has some room to loft so it's not all compressed. Also, seam sealants on a lot of tents is very susceptible to fluctuations in temperature. So if you store your tent in your garage and the temperature fluctuates a lot, that can damage the seam sealant on the rain fly of your tent really quickly. If you pull out your tent in the spring and the seams are kind of crusty and it's flaking off, you need to re-seam seal your tent. Your best option, especially for more expensive tents, instead of storing it in your garage, is to find a safe place in your home where the temperature Temperature doesn't fluctuate so drastically just for the longevity of your gear. Since most of us have a little bit extra free time in the winter time, since we're not riding and traveling, it's also a great time to organize all of your gear while you're doing this kind of maintenance so that you know where everything is. That way it's easier to grab and easier to pack in the spring. A great thing to do while you're doing all this maintenance on the gear is to live vicariously through other people's experiences. Motorcycle books are my favorite and the most immersive in my opinion. Audiobooks especially are great because you can do other things while you're listening to the book. There's also lots and lots of amazing motorcycle films that you can watch while you do that maintenance on your gear but also just to live vicariously through other people until you can get out riding again. I'll probably make a whole different video about my favorite motorcycle books and my favorite motorcycle films, but in the meantime, I did write two blog posts about those specific topics that you can go read down in the description below, just for some inspiration. Last but not least, this is an excellent time to be planning future adventures. Looking up new routes, making imaginary routes that you really want to ride, even though you might not. <laughs> Working out what kind of budget you need to set for the summer to meet your goals and how much you need to be saving now to make those trips happen. This is also a really great time to do research about new places that you've never been to before that you might want to visit. There's a ton of different ways to do this. You can just do a simple Google search for best places to visit and blah, 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 country or state. You can also sub to different kind of travel email lists. They don't necessarily have to be about motorcycle travel. Sometimes I find the best destinations in the Atlas Obscura email or Outside Magazine or Backpacker Magazine adventure journal, all the things. <laughs> this is also a great time to search best places to travel in 2020 because all of the travel vloggers are making those videos right now. But also, if you have a spouse or a significant other that doesn't ride, this is a great time to spend lots of quality time with them because you probably won't see them a whole lot during the summer. <laughs> the 
that's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this little video. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon who make these videos possible. For as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to videos like these over on my Patreon account, link down in the description. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. You can get me a gallon of gas over on my Ko-Fi account, get me a little bit closer to my future travel goals. If that's not up your alley, I do have an Etsy and a Redbubble shop where you can get stickers, prints, t-shirts, all the good things with my motorcycle art on them. And if that's not up your alley either, that is totally okay. I appreciate you just for being here and I will see you guys later. Let's keep moving. Another thing that I would recommend as a motorcyclist who lives in a cold climate during the winter is a nice warm truck to hide in after you film in 38 degree weather. Ah, oh, I love my truck. I might be able to feel my legs again here in a minute. <laughs>